Good evening, New Hope family and friends. Welcome back to our midweek message here at New Hope Baptist Church, where we're building faith and sharing love. I'm Pastor Graves, and we are so excited you've chosen to worship with us one more time for our midweek message, where we've been in this sermon series called Lost and Found, looking at the parables of Jesus, where he talks about things that once were lost and how they are found. Today, we're going to be talking from this big idea, Jesus values you. You know what I love? A good lost and found section. I love the weird and random objects that you may find in there. You might find keys or books, toys, sunglasses, socks, shoes, clothes. As a matter of fact, you never know what you're going to find in there. And last week, we said that there are a ton of reasons why people lose things. Number one, it might be because they're careless. Secondly, it's because they can get distracted. But there's another reason why things might get lost and not get lost, but stay lost. Some things in the lost and found section stay there for a long time collecting dust because we don't think they're worth the effort of the owner trying to find them. And sometimes we lose things and don't bother to find them because the things we lose, we think they're basically trash. Let me ask you this. Have you ever had a moment where you felt like that thing that was lost and abandoned in the lost and found section? I've wondered at points and times in my life how much I actually matter to others and to God. Even worse, if I be honest on today, I've even treated other people as if they were disposable and not worth my time or attention. Maybe you are wondering how valuable you are to God. And as young people, we often assign our value to ourselves and others based on our possessions, as if our money or stuff could actually add up or subtract value from who we are. Not only do we value ourselves based on our possessions, but also our abilities. And isn't it interesting how we all have different opinions about what's valuable and what really isn't valuable? If you think value is calculated by how good you are at sports, you're going to put unrealistic pressure on yourself to excel in that area. And you're going to look down on people who don't excel in that way. Not only do we value ourselves based on our possessions and our abilities, but we also value ourselves based on our characteristics. And if you think someone's value is determined by their attractiveness, their popularity, their sense of humor, or their intelligence, you might find yourself feeling shame about things that you can't control when you think you don't measure up in those areas. Plus, you might miss out on the opportunity of some really awesome relationships with people who don't fit into your quote unquote category of what it means to be valuable. We usually calculate value, ours and other people's value, without really thinking about it. We all have preferences and biases and experiences that shape our opinions on what we think is valuable. And that's why we have to think critically and long about what it is when we say valuable, because it impacts how we treat others and even ourselves. Now, throughout this series, we've been looking at one chapter of the Bible, just one, Luke chapter 15. And this chapter recounts a series of stories that Jesus told about things that once were lost and then found. Each story communicates a different and important truth. These stories aren't just historical stories, they're parables. That means that they are stories that Jesus made up and told in order to get to a bigger truth. We've explored the first of these stories last week with Minister Garner, but in order for this next story to make sense, we have to remember who Jesus was talking to and why he was telling them this story. So let's do a quick recap. Jesus is telling these stories to the Pharisees. Who are the Pharisees? The Pharisees are the religious leaders who were super focused on the hundreds of laws that please God. These laws were important. 
And they weren't inherently bad. In fact, they were given by God to help God's people stay healthy, safe, and close to God. But Jesus said to the Pharisees that they had gotten things wrong. Not only had they gotten things wrong, they got things really wrong because the Pharisees believed that following these laws would be the way that someone would be able to tell that they're more holy, they're more good, or they're somehow more valuable to God. And in doing this, these Pharisees became arrogant, self-righteous, and dismissive of people who they believed were sinful. And so the Pharisees often attacked Jesus because he spent time with people that the Pharisees didn't believe were valuable. And that caused them to be angry at the way Jesus cared for people who they considered to be sinners. And Jesus told this series of stories to help the Pharisees see how wrong they were about themselves, others, and God. First, Jesus told a story about a lost sheep to show the Pharisees that God isn't angry or judgmental when we wander away. Instead, God finds us and carries us lovingly back to safety. Now let's look at the second story. In Luke chapter 15, verse 8 through 10, we read these words. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Now here in this passage, the woman in this story, she has 10 coins and she loses one. And you might be thinking, so what? It's just one coin. She still has nine more coins, Pastor Graves. What's the big deal? But for this woman, one silver coin was worth a full days of work. So the loss of this coin would have had a major impact impact on her. And this explains what happened after she found her lost coin. She began to rejoice and celebrate. And if you remember, there were a few celebrations mentioned in last week's story as well. We see that the shepherd rejoiced when he found his lost sheep. We see that the whole community rejoiced when the shepherd found his lost sheep. And then here in this passage, we see that the woman rejoices when she finds her lost coin. And here's another thing these parables have in common. At the end of both parables, Jesus said that there's a huge party in heaven any time that anyone lost gets found by God. When someone meets Jesus for the very first time, heaven rejoices. And when someone who knows Jesus but wandered away finally comes back, heaven rejoices then as well. These parables, of course, they have a point. They teach us something important about who God is and what God wants us to do. And in this parable, we learn that even when we're lost and wandering far from God, God values us enough to tear up the whole house to find. And it's great to know that God values you, but the main takeaway of this parable wasn't to tell the Pharisees how much God valued them, although that was true. Jesus's point in telling this story is to show that God values everyone, even the people that the Pharisees overlooked, even the people that the Pharisees dismissed, even the people that the Pharisees didn't think were holy enough, God values them. And he values you and I in the same manner. Because the Pharisees were judgmental toward people they considered sinners, Jesus needed them to understand that God deeply loved the people who didn't matter to them. The Pharisees, they were convinced that these sinners were less valuable to God and therefore to them because they weren't as pure or righteous or holy as the Pharisees were. And although the Pharisees knew the Jewish scriptures very well, it appears they forgot about the scripture in Psalm 103 when it says, God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor does God repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heaven is from the earth, 
So great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. You see, the Pharisees were judgmental. They were self-righteous and condemning to others. And they believe that's how God would want them to be. But unlike the Pharisees, this psalm tells us that God is merciful God is gracious. God is slow to anger, overflowing with love, forgiving, and compassionate. Jesus knew the Pharisees needed this reminder, but I think he knew that the Pharisees weren't alone. You and I, we need that reminder as well. Like the woman in her lost coin, Jesus values you, and he also values the people that we often struggle with valuing. You haven't done anything to earn God's love, but your love. Now let that love change you so deeply that you begin to value others like God values you. Like the woman in her lost coin, Jesus values you and everyone else so much more than we know. And we won't realize that until we get to a place where we can accept the fact that not only does Jesus value us, but he also values everyone else in the same manner. This is our lesson for the week. My challenge to you this week is simply to find a way to show someone else that they are valued by God. Do that this week and let me know how that goes. It's my prayer that you are blessed by that, but that someone else is blessed by that. We're all going through something and we don't know what people are going through. So the least we can do is let them know and show them that they are value. Let's end with a word of believing prayer. Bow your heads, close your eyes. God, we thank you for this word that reminds us that you value us. Lord, you value us so much that you would go through all that it takes to tear up the house and find that one lost coin. God, we thank you that we have been that lost coin and you have found us. And Lord, some of us still are that lost coin and we recognize you value us enough to come tear up the house and find us. And so, Lord, when you find us, help us to accept the fact that you've been looking for us and help us to come to you and receive you as you are seeking us. Lord, we thank you for this word. We pray that we would not only know that we are valued, but that we would operate in such a manner that we can show others that they are valued not only by us, but also by you. Lord, continue to bless, lead, guide, and direct us. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. See you next time. Be blessed. Peace. Mm -hmm.